Moving on, it's time to look at some Kickstarter Pickstarters. And honestly, our first one is sort of a, a news slash Kickstarter. Yeah, it's, a, it's an obligatory yes. <laughs> mention. We are contractually obligated to discuss Munchkin Shakespeare. Uh, There's you know, actually no context with Steve Jackson. We're just saying it's important. <laughs> yeah, that was we, a joke, to be clear. <laughs> so... Munchkin, it's a game. There are lots of Munchkin games. This is one themed around Shakespeare. If you don't know what Munchkin is, I can't help you. That's what it is. If you don't know what Shakespeare is... I'm actually <laughs> very surprised if you're watching this video series and not know Munchkin. You you did some dancing to avoid that. <laughs> you skipped a step there somewhere <laughs> along the way. Well, look, in terms of the gameplay, there's not much to talk about here. It's, it's another skin of Munchkin. I think the interesting thing is that... As I, I believe this is the first time there's been a Munchkin game funded through Kickstarter. No, and what this seems to be a sign of... Prove me wrong if I'm wrong. I feel, because you deemed Steve Jackson and so many others, I feel like we're going to more and more, we're going to see less board games in board game stores and just... Did you back the Kickstarter? Because that's how you're gonna get it. <laughs> it is. I mean, and we've we've talked we've talked about Kickstarter a lot on this show because you have to with board games. Uh, but it, I mean, if there ever was a company that or, or a game franchise that you didn't need to go through Kickstarter for, like they don't. Well, they, this is gonna sell. And the funny thing for me is because Kickstarter, in essence, especially when it comes to this cool mini or not, with the ex exclusion of. Exclusives, which I'm, I'm, that's a dead horse, I feel like, if I talk about this point, mm -hmm. uh, my opinion on that, is like pre ordering. Yeah, no, that's it's, what it is. And in the video game world, you know, there's a very big movement, I still think it's going on, of like, don't pre order games. Like, you gotta wait till it comes out, wait till the reviews, don't give them the money beforehand. Or wait until it's on Steam for five bucks. <laughs> right, right. But in the board game industry, we're just like, give me it all now. <laughs> we're, it's, it's a little bit younger. Well, actually older, but in a way younger. <laughs> yeah, we haven't reached that. I don't know if we will reach that. We're point. younger when it comes to, into digital, I think. True. Market sure. Uh, the, the modern board game movement is right. certainly younger. Now, we're, now I'm just cheating to get what I say to be true. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it's I I I, I, don't, I give cool mini or not a little more of a pass because you know it's a lot of miniatures and you never know. Well, like, I I literally said them because the last Kickstarter. No, I know, I know what you're and saying. I backed it, so. <laughs> but but <laughs> Munchkin is literally like at Target. At, at, you know, you can find it at Toys R Us anywhere. This is not. How long until we get Monopoly on Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> When Hasbro puts a game on Kickstarter is the day I delete my Kickstarter account. That's it. I'm leaving. Uh, I don't know. So it's Munchkin Shakespeare. Check it out. I don't. I guess as a theme, Shakespeare is not the worst theme they've come up with. Well, let's be honest. How, we're always wondering, like, how come that hasn't had Munchkin thrown out at this point? <laughs> yeah. We're going to get Coca-Cola Munchkin. <laughs> we're going to get Jonathan Estes Munchkin. It's only a matter of time. Uh, we are now announcing the Roll for Crit Munchkin. I'm sure there will be lots of funny puns, right? Shakespearean puns. And uh, <laughs> moving on, you've got a game here called Arkham Ritual. Yes, this actually comes from uh, people, they've done two other big kickstars before. Uh, the Majestic, I believe. The Majority. The majority, thank you. Gotcha. And the other one I'm blanking on, but this is a new game from them. A little bit different. The other two were felt, more, at least in my mind, a little bit more like anime Japanese. This does not feel like that at all. Okay. The idea is you're all pretty much trying to avoid dying in a, in a Cthulian based ritual if you haven't guessed from the name mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the way that works is everyone has a card and they have it on their pretty much like on their forehead so you don't know what you have but you can okay. see what everyone else has like the um, the headbands game yes <laughs> whatever you want to call so it so it's a seeing how people discard and trade is how you got to try to get more information and hopefully survive the end of the ritual so I thought it was a fun little mechanic for a Cthulhu game uh, I mean not too I mean I you probably could do with other things, but I love the idea of, uh, like, just like Hanabi or, like you said, the headband game of not knowing what you have. So you're like, oh, shit. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely and, something that you can explore. I mean, as you can see from behind us, it's $9. It's $9. For, I believe it was like 20 something cards, which I think sounds pretty good. And the art looks really nice. Actually. Yeah, no, it's nice. I do like the art a lot too. It, lo it looks very distinct from other Lovecraft games that we've seen, and there are many of them. 
Uh, that must be kind of a nice thing, almost, that you can call something... Well, it's like Cthulhu. It's just called, you can say Arkham, and immediately, as a gamer, people are kind of tuned in to want to know about that game. Well, I definitely... I mean, this is a talk for another time, but just how interesting Lovecraft and Cthulhu is, and one of the reasons why I think it hit board games because it's... Um, Free. <laughs> yeah, what, what's the term? When it, public, public domain. Public domain, which is so... Like, you get those same kind of things when you see a Batman symbol, but that's not public domain. <laughs> right. So it's just very interesting, especially since I know um, the whole copyright thing of big things happening, because really the reason why so much things aren't in public domain now is Mickey Mouse. He really is the one that... And supposedly I think there's a big thing happening where he might not be able to avoid coming out of into public. So... Mm. Very interesting to watch, in particular with other things if they have to go leave God, into the public domain. Wait for all the Mickey Mouse board games on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Cthulhu just disappears. It's it's all Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck legacy games. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I bet you would play if they made a uh, Dude Ducktales. Duck yeah, are you, come on, that'd be uh, that'd be great. But I, overall, still check this game out. Like I said, only nine dollars, and I think like it. Up to two dollars shipping, depending on where you live, kind of stuff. So, I mean, great deal for a fun and interesting mechanic. Check that out, Arkham Ritual, and uh, the Munchkin Shakespeare also was twenty bucks. If you were curious, and there was an expansion you could back with it if you want. So there. No, did that one actually have? Ex did, I don't know exclusives. As, I don't. It, they did. They referred to the expansion as a Kickstarter expansion. I, my guess is they're going to print it again later, but I didn't see if right. they said it. Or not. I mean, we've had our talk about exclusives. I'm just curious if they. Have. Anyway, right. uh, those are our Kickstarters. Mm -hmm. 